Number one tells us that we have an angle ABC that's being taken by a dilation. They give us the center and the scale factor, and it's being taken to A prime, B prime, C prime. The measure of that angle is 21 degrees, and then they want us to determine the measure of the dilated angle, A prime, B prime, C prime. And when you have a dilation, angle measures don't change. So ABC um, is going to be the same as A prime, B prime, C prime. So this one's going to be 21 degrees. Number two, select all lines that could be the image of line M by dilation. So remember that lines, when they're dilated, um, can be taken to parallel lines. So if we kind of look at this, here's, some, here's the dilations of line M. And so um, we can kind of see that if M were dilated by a scale factor of one, it would be itself. It could go to N. It could also go to P. So those are the three. Um, could not go to O or L because that would have a rotation with it. So M, N, and P. Number three then tells us to... Um, if we dilate line F with a scale factor of two, its image is G. So F is our original line. So this is our original line, and this is being dilated to G. What point could be the center of dilation if we're taking from F to G? So then it's going further away. So G is further away from the um, dilated point. So really the only option here would be point D. And if we did just kind of draw, looking at this, we could see um, that this distance here and then this distance here from D to the from D to G, so like this whole thing versus from D to F appears to be two times bigger. So D is the only option there for a center of dilation. Number four, quadrilateral A prime, B prime, C prime. E prime is the image. So this inner part is the image of the outer part after a dilation around F. So what is the scale factor of this dilation? So remember, we want to um, take the new measurement. So a measurement from the new shape and divide it by a measurement from the original. And we want to make sure that we're doing corresponding parts. So we're going to take BC, B prime, C prime, and divide that by BC, and that's going to get us a scale factor of one half. And you could certainly have done um, other sides. So you could have compared A, A prime, B prime to AB and done 1.5 divided by 3 or 2.5 divided by 5 would have gotten you the same scale factor. Number five, a polygon has a perimeter of 18 units and it's dilated with a scale factor of three half. What is the perimeter of the image? So remember, perimeter dilates at the same scale factor as the sides. So if the original perimeter is 18, we can multiply that by the scale factor and get our, and get our new perimeter. So 18 times three is 54, and then we have divided by two. And 54 divided by 2 is 27 units. Number 6 asks us to solve the equation. So we will just do um, some cross multiplication here. So x times 4 is 4x. And then 7 times 10 is 70. So we know that the cross products equal each other. So 4x equals 70. Then we'll just divide by 4 and we get um, x equals 70 divided by 4, which we could divide both by 2 and simplify to 35 halves. Um, or if you want a decimal form, that would be 17.5. All right, so in number 7, they give us some measurements for triangle ABC and XYZ. And so I've drawn those measurements here into triangle ABC so we can see them. Um, and it says that Andre thinks that the two triangles will be congruent to each other with these measurements. And um, so I've only drawn one triangle so far, but we can see that the two sides that are given to us um, do not contain the angle. 
So the angle is not between those two sides. So if you remember, um, that is not going to guarantee that the two triangles are congruent. Okay. So this is definitely not going to guarantee um, congruent triangles. And so let's look at why. So this is, why is this not going to work? <clears throat> so we know that this angle needed to stay the same. So they gave us a 30 degree angle. Well, I'm just going to extend this line um, because that's still a 30 degree angle there. So I haven't changed that measure. And I'm going to leave this three the same. Um, but what I'm going to look at here is I'm going to use my compass so that I can um, look at an, like all of the lengths that are two. So this would be all of the, the side lengths that are two. So I'm just gonna kind of rotate this here and see where it crosses on this other line. And when I go to draw this segment in here, then we know that this segment will be equal to this one since it was created by a circle. So I know that this length here is also two. Okay, so I know that those are equal to each other. And so now if I draw a triangle in here, so when I look at this, I know this leg is three. I know this angle is 30. And you can see this orange triangle being created here. And we know that this orange triangle actually has the same measurements as what they just gave us. So we know that this side was three, this side was two, and this angle is 30. And this is clearly not the same um, size as that blue one. So we can see multiple triangles could be created with those measures. That's why it doesn't guarantee congruent triangles.